What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing you an anti-meta code talker deck. Now the best thing about this particular type of deck is it actually is only going to get stronger as we go forward. We are still missing one of the code generators from the hand which will be the water style, and we're also missing the fire link free which is basically code talker with the Salaman Great Heat Leo which looks amazing. And... On top of that, we also have a reprint for Firewall with an Arata coming out, which could mean that Firewall could get unbanned, making the deck even stronger and just as deadly to the meta. So, with all of that out of the way, I will take you through the in-depth profile as I've been doing most recently, with shoutouts to Winter Kills for the inspiration of the style of video. With all that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content from the Zephyr War Games channel. With all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into this deck for the anti-meta Code Talkers. So for the monsters, we are playing Triple Nightmare Corrupted Ibli, Triple Lady Debug, Triple Microcoder, Double Code Radiator, Double Code Generator, Double Parallel XEs, one Gitachi, one Mathmet Diameter, one Mathmet Subtraction, one Mathmet Addition, one Mathmet Sigma, one Format Skipper, one Cyverse Gadget, one Backup Sentry, one Catchy Eye Level 2, one Dot Scaper, and then for our hand traps, we are playing three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. For the spells, we are playing Triple Cynet Mining, Triple Cynet Codec. One Pot of Avarice, one Monster Reborn, one One for One, one Call by the Grave, one Mathmet Billion Blade, and for the trap card, we are playing a single copy of Synet Conflict. For the extra deck, we are playing two Salaman Great Balinx, one Talkback Lancer, one Link Garibo, one Update Jammer, one Splash Mage, one Code Talker Inverted, one Code Talker, one Trance Code Talker, one X Code Talker, one Trigate Wizard, one Shooting Code Talker, one Access Code Talker, and one Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax. As a couple of flex spots, which are basically keeping the spot warm until this guy returns, you can play one Firewall Xyz Dragon, one Prime Mathmech Albatarian because of the Mathmech engine, or one Geo Mathmech Magma as a bit more of an aggressive option. For this particular profile, I will talk about all three as well. So, now let's get into the cards in as much detail and depth. So, Code Talkers, I cannot believe how I have not been looking at this deck for so long. It's, it got inspired to me by watching one player from our locals play it, uh, and I was like, oh my god, this deck can do this now? Uh, Joe's been doing a lot about the Code Talkers, but I hadn't really paid much attention. And then I've kind of looked at it and gone, wow, this is actually a really good deck to kind of counter the meta. So... Let's go into detail of our three core cards. So we're going off with Nightmare Corrupted Ibli. The reason this is so important, and personally, I value this more than the Microcoder and the Lady Debug. So my normal summon more so, I would rather it be Ibli, because with this normal summon of Ibli, what I can do is once I use it to link off, I give it to my opponent. That then protects me from Gammas, it protects me from Nibiru's, it also protects me or stops my opponent specifically trying to special summon monsters that aren't link monsters. So it does mean that they will need to commit their normal summon to then make a link summon in order to get rid of Corrupted Ibli, or in the form of stuff like Virtual Worlds, they will need to tribute over the Ibli, and of course in the ways of Eldritch Invoked or Eldritch um, Zoo, they will need to be able to get rid of Ibli first before they can start making their Zoo Zeus climbs, or they can start using their Sanguine Traps as well. So very, very good and powerful card. It is obviously... 100 times better going first than it is going second, but going second, depending on the type of deck your opponent is playing, it can still cause a lot of issues. Then we go on to, not the second core card of the deck, but just as an important normal summon monster, if you don't get Corrupted Ibli, you go with your Lady Debug. Now keep in mind that Lady Debug can actually search you out your Ibli, which is important for later on in the game, uh, or in the combo, because you can special summon Ibli a little bit later on if you're not worried about Nibiru, so mainly if you're going game one, uh, you can still get corrupted Ibli to the board. You slow your, like you close your ceiling down a little bit. But what it does do is it does allow you to give 
uh, your opponent nibbly, which means that you're pretty much guaranteeing that they're not going to be able to special summon. So that's the only route you'd go down that way. But what Lady Debug can do on a consistent basis is also lead you into your Micro Coda. Uh, and this card is oh, nuts. So, so good. I'm so glad it got a reprint as well so that everyone could get hold of them. Um, but what makes this card so good is if a Cyverse monster you control would be used as Link Material for a Code Talker monster, you can use this card in your hand as material as well. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard as material for the Link Summon of a Code Talker monster, you can add... Um, one Cynet spell or trap from your deck to your hand, or if this card on the field was using material, you can add one level 4 Cyverse monster instead. Now, 9 out of 10, you're probably going to be using it from the hand because that is then going to get you into either your Cynet Conflict, which is going to be your out and out counter trap, or probably the second best card in the deck, in my entire opinion, um, and there are a lot of these anyway, is your Cynet Codec. So broken, and we'll get to that when we get to the spells. But these are, are your utility cards. Any kind of mixture of these makes the deck tick. Now, the best mixture is these, in my opinion, because not only do you protect yourself from Nibiru and lock your opponent out from Gammering you, but you then get to start link climbing higher with Code Talker. You get your spell card. That then constantly gives you your materials to search, and then that's only going to lead you to further link summons. Then let's look at the two of. So you'll be looking at your code radiator. Um, this one is exactly the same as micro coder in the sense that it can be used to link someone from the hand, but it's a bit more aggressive rather than defensive or searchability for consistency, purely because if it is used as link material from the hand, um, it will allow you to target one of your opponent's monsters, change its attack to zero and negate its effects. And if it's sent from the field instead, you can do two monsters instead. But it's very rare you're going to be using it from the field, and you de this deck wants to go first. So it's just there as an additional link material from the hand. Now, Code Generator, on the other hand, can be used from the hand exactly the same, but when it is used that way, it sends a Cyverse monster from your deck with 1,200 or less attack to the graveyard. So ideally, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sending your Dotscaper, because then Dotscaper becomes a free extender. Um, if it was used on the field, you can add the card to your hand instead. Again, very rare. You're only going to want to be linking these with your hand um, rather than from the field. But just keep in mind that they do have secondary effects to give you that little bit more extra for your plays going forward and definitely for the grind game. We've then, of course, got two parallel XZs. Now, the reason we've only got this at two is because you can search it once you make your Xcode Talker off of the back of the Cynet Codec. Now, the wind um, micro coda, as you can see, we've got dark, we've got earth, and we've got water. We are still missing the wind one, um, and we are missing a couple of others, which hopefully in the future we'll see a fire one, and we'll also see uh, maybe a light one as well, just to kind of keep the family together. But for now, nothing is more better than a Parallel XZ, which is what you were, I did want to search. Not only can it instigate your rank 4 plays, but it can also instigate you lower level link plays that can help you get into a soft attack lock as long uh, alongside a... Um, co-linked Transcode Talker as well, which is going to give you a negate, uh, sorry, not Transcode Talker, a beautiful co-linked, where are you? Uh, losing my mind here. Trigate Wizard, there we go. A beautiful co-linked Trigate Wizard, and in the future could also instigate a co-linked Firewall Dragon, which is going to give you multiple bounces as well. Then for the one offs, you've got the one uh, Gitachi, the At Ignista. This again is an Earth target that you can search off of the Cynet Codec when you make Transcode Talker, and he is basically a free summon. But on top of that, as being a free summon, he also makes the card, the Link Monster you make unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of their turn. So if you are making a Trigate Wizard with this card, which is probably what you're going to be doing 9 times out of 10, your opponent can't stop or negate its effect. So as long as it still points to those monsters, it's still going to be able to negate a card effect, boost attack as well, um, and it gives all of the plus that you need. For the Mathmech engine, the standard Mathmech engine that people play are the one addition and one subtraction, purely because they are just free extenders. As long as you get another monster on board, you even, or even if your opponent's got a monster, it's a free special summon by reducing a monster by a thousand or giving your opponent an additional thousand, or the monster an additional thousand. I have spiced it up by adding in a diameter and a sigma. Now the Sigma is specifically here is if you open it turn one or if you open it up with a Cynet Mining, it's beautiful because you ditch off the Cynet Mining and because you've not got a monster in the extra monster zone, you can bring it back. 
There is also a point throughout the entire combo just before you get to your last summon that Sigma can be used because you don't have a monster in the extra monster zone. So it allows you to bring it back. That also then instigates your flex plays for, of course, your Magma because it is the only tuner in the deck, but it is technically just a free summon. Also keep in mind that these are these two are both searchable because you do make a light co-talker and they are Cyverse. Um, these two sadly aren't as yet, but until we get the co-talker mixed with um, Heat Leo, then you can start searching these quite nicely and easily. Now diameter, what makes this so good is in the grind game or in the late game, um, if you were to normal summon this card, as it is a tuner as well, it allows you to revive one Cyverse monster from your graveyard of level four. So what that can instigate is it can instigate a rank four play for your Primate Mathmet Albertarian, or of course your Firewall Xyz Dragon, but it can also instigate a Synchro Summon of Magma. And on top of that, not only do the Albertarian and the Magma have their own effects, but Diameter will also give them an additional effect to be able to negate any card or effect that is activated. Which is very, very important because what this does is as a ghost getter or a starter, Diameter can then instigate that protection. But as a recursion card as well, it can also instigate that protection and get you monsters on the board. Keep in mind, even if you make the Albertarian, you don't have to have materials to use the effect of Diameter. So you can still detach the materials to search out the cards and then you still have a negate on board. All technically from one card as long as you've been able to set up a level 4 Cyverse from the graveyard. Now it does negate that Cyverse's effect so it doesn't mean you can bring back Lady Debug and get a search off of that. But it's just one of them recursion cards that is also searchable that can provide you with an out and out negate. One card that is very very useful in this deck um, is the Cynet Optimization. Now the sign-up optimization, what it allows you to do is grant you an additional normal summon, which means the consistency of diameter is a little bit better uh, when you are going first. I don't own a copy of that card, but if you wanted to go more focused on this particular version, you could put that in. And what I would advise putting that in for is you'd probably bump out the jar of uh, uh, pot of avarice. Just so that you've got it, or you can take out the Mathmet Billion Blades, it really does depend on you. Um, but there was something that I was looking into to try and make the Mathmex more consistent in order to try and set up a Lapellation during my opponent's turn as well, so that I could pretty much um, Trishula during my opponent's turn, as well as maintaining some sort of resource uh, along with the rest of the engine. So something to consider, but just in general with the build that we have in front of you, it still works very, very well. Searchable, recursion, and the ability to give you an Omni Negate just from its summon is near enough insane for the deck. Then moving on to the last of the ones, we've got the one four Mud Skipper, we've got the one Cyverse Gadget, the one Backup Setry, uh, the one Catchy uh, uh, Eve Level 2, and the one Dot Scaper. Now, as you can probably tell, apart from, of course, the Skipper, um, these are pretty much extenders. These three here are the extenders that just pretty much summon themselves for free. Uh, and throughout the combo, you can probably search out the Catchy Eye or the Backup Set Tree from your Lady Debug. And what this does is it just gives you um, an additional level of deck fin because you could just search out the Gadget. It will do the exact same job. But by searching out the Debug, you get a bit of a deck fin by getting these two. And then you summon one of them down and off you go from there. The backup set tree is 99.9% .9 always going to be live, and it is a free extender. Sometimes you don't want to go for your link 1s, you do actually just want to try and get into your link 2s or higher, uh, and that is what backup set tree allows you to do. Four Mud Skitter is just that one particular card that allows you to normal summon it, uh, or even special summon it, link it off, and then search you out another component. It's not needed at free and can be a little bit bricky, which is why it's only at one. And again, keep in mind, apart from the Dotscaper, these are all light monsters. So again, they can all be searched once you make your inverted code talker. Um, but there are better options to do that. And they're just there as a general extender. The Dotscaper is there to be sent off of your code uh, radiator uh, generator. sorry, um, And then you're going to get a free summon off of the back of it. The Cyverse Gadget, like I said, is another option that you can search out your Lady Debug, um, but obviously off the back of this, you special summon this off of your inverted Code Talker, you then link it away, and it will then produce you a token, so it gives you that form of extender. So this does what Lady Debug plus Black Upset Tree or uh, Catchy does um, from the one card, but it just requires one card to do it rather than one card plus an extender. And then finally, we've got with Triple Ghost Ogre, and this is just a personal touch of mine, because we're going anti-meta, um, I think Ghost Ogre can be very, very powerful against for, um, certain matchups. So when my opponent goes to try and activate Zeus, Ghost Ogre gets rid of it. When my opponent tries to activate the Virtual World Trap with Chuchi, 
Ghost Ogre gets rid of it, where Ash Blossom doesn't. Now, Ash Blossom is definitely the more generic card that you would put in here, hands down, because that then goes, okay, I'm going to hit a more variety um, of decks. Whereas I just think Ghost Ogre has that surprise factor that not a lot of people are prepared for or ready for uh, and can actually help you combat the meta a tad bit more if your locals is specific. Now, this is a card that is flex point where you can take it out for Ash Blossom, you can take it out for Imperms, any kind of hand track you want. Now, as you can see, we do host a huge amount of general combo cards, extenders, starters, and everything that for. So if you look at these, I'll just quickly split these up a little bit as they are now all mushed together. But I'll just kind of show you the level of what we've got. So extender, extender, technically extender, 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 uh, linking from the hand, linking from the hand, linking from the hand, normal summon, normal summon, extender, extender, uh, link from the hand, normal summon, normal summon, Technically extender, technically a normal summon, technically a normal summon, extender, extender, link from the hand, link from the hand, link from the hand, normal summon, normal summon. So you can kind of see how we've balanced these all out, um, that they're very uh, relatively balanced. So you've got a decent amount of extenders uh, and your normal summons, and then you've got the same amount of normal summons as you do linking from the hand. So that is pretty much it for the monster lineup itself in general. Um, but you can kind of see where the balance kind of comes from it. And your normal summons get everything else going as well. They'll always get some form of plus from that. Speaking of plus, let's look at the spell cards in the deck. And trust me, the spell cards, again, spell and track cards, technically one track card, um, are very minimal, but they get the job done. So you've got triple Cynet Mining. This searches you out 99% of your monsters. The 1% the that it doesn't search out is going to be your Ghost Ogre and your Parallel XZs um, because it's not a level 4 or lower. But ideally, the first target that I tend to go for will be the Ibli if I've got a um, Microcoder or a Radiator or a Generator in the hand to go further forward. Otherwise, you're going to go for your Lady Debug. And if you've already got a combination of those two, then you go for your Microcoder, your Radiator or your Generator and you pretty much get going. Then probably the best spell in this day is Cyanet Codec. Now, this card is nuts. Unbelievably nuts. So if a Code Talker monster or monsters is special summoned from the extra deck to a field except during the damage step, target one of those monsters, add one Cybers monster with the same attribute from your deck to your hand. You can't special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Cybers. Well, so what? If this card leaves the field, you cannot add other monsters, uh, even if this card leaves the field. You cannot add other monsters with the same attribute to your hand by the effect of Cyanet Codec this turn, and you can only activate this effect once per chain. So, what does that mean? Well, basically, ladies and gentlemen, if you summon a Code Talker monster from your extra deck with a different attribute than one you've already summoned, you can add a card from your deck to the hand with the same attribute that is a Cyverse uh, monster. So, as a quick example, if you were to Link Summon, shoot in Code Talker with this on play. You get to add a Radiator. If you search out, or if you link out an X Code Talker, you get to add a Parallel Exceed. If you link out a Trans Code Talker, you get to add yourself a Radiator, uh, sorry, Generator. If you bring out Code Talker, you get to search out a Micro Coder. And these are not once per turn. It's not you can only get one of these per turn. It is, as long as it's not the same attribute, you can add a water, wind, an earth, and a dark every single time you link summon. And I will show you in the combo, because in the combo you pretty much go through dark, light, earth, and wind at the very least, which is just allowing you to extend your plays. This card is beyond nuts. Beautifully, it got a reprint in Toon Chaos as a rare. Thank you! Uh, and it is so, so good for the entire deck. Moving on, we do play a lot of one-offs. We've got the one Pot of Avarice. Again, this is just for the grind game. Now, you shouldn't need to hit the grind game, but if it happens, you have a way of coming back into it. And what Pot of Avarice can also do is you can burn through a small chunk of your deck and extra deck um, before getting too far. So an Avarice can reset all of that and then give you the ability of drawing into your extenders. Like you've seen, we've got a lot of extenders in the deck. You've got your generator, you've got your radiator, you've got your microcoder. And being able to draw into those is incredibly important, incredibly powerful. And I thought a one pot of Avarice is a nice little way of not bricking on it too early, but trying to get to it when you kind of want it. Um, and it is only there for the grind game. So if you wanted to take it out, you could. There would be no love loss on that. 
Moss Reborn, free extender. One for one, get to a micro coder, get to a four mud skipper. Pro probably gonna go for your micro coder earlier or more consistently, but it's just there as a free summon. Cool bike because no one wants to be droll and lot birded in this deck. And then finish off, we've got the one Mathmet Billion Blade. Now the reason this is kind of cool is it equips to any Cyverse monster. If you wanted to be really, really spicy, what you could do is you could put in a duplication or a multiplication, um, sorry, a multiplication or a division, because then during damage step, what you can do is you can send one of them from the deck to the graveyard and it'll either boost your monster or reduce your opponent's monster. It's a spicy little tech that I've put in here just off of the back of the Mathmet engine, because if you were to go into your Albertarian, this is the only card you're going to be searching. It's just an option. Again, it's something you can take out quite easily, but it also allows you to protect some of your Cyverse monsters as well, uh, and then set up your graveyard as, on top of that. And if this card is sent from the Spell and Trap card zone to the graveyard, you can tie a Mathmet card in your graveyard, accept itself, and add it to the hand. So it gives you another way of recycling your subtraction, your addition, or anything like that from the grave as well. And then finally, the one Cynet Conflict, Counter Trap that is searchable. What more do you want? So when a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated while you control a code talker monster, easily going to be doing that. Negate the activation, and if you do, banish that card. And if you do, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects of cards with the same original name as that card that was banished until the end of the next turn. Like, it doesn't charge you life points. It's searchable. It's an Omni Negate. It banishes, and then it basically says to your opponent, you know what? Because you did that, I'm not going to let you do any more of that. So if your opponent opened up with like three Dark Ruler no more, and so they go, right, one Dark Ruler no more, you go, okay, conflict, and then you can't Dark Ruler me. Droplet, can't Dark Ruler me. It's like, it just, just stops you. Like, stops you playing. Miscellaneous, sign it, conflict. Oh, but I wanted to banish it. Tough, I'm going to banish it for you and negate it. And you can't use any until the end of the next turn, which means you can't protect your dinos during my turn. Like... B-E-A, beautiful, in a tidy little bow. Love this deck already. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the main deck. So now let's talk about the extra deck, because the extra deck is just as powerful and just as spicy. So, as you can see, we did not play any Salaman Greats in the main deck, but we do play two in the extra in the form of a double Bay Lynx. Now, with the double Bay Lynx, it is requiring specifically a level four or lower Cyverse monster. Simple as it. That's all it is. What this does also offer you is it does give you that link arrow pointing down, which is important for the um, wizard combo that we do later on as well, which I will show you. Uh, and it pretty much helps you not uni link, but it does help you uh, pretty much complete all three areas for the trigate tri um, to give you that additional negation. You could, if you wanted to, put in a small Salaman Great engine. I decided to go with Mathmex over Salaman Greats to make it a little bit spicy, a little bit different, and kind of help with the grind game. For the other Link ones that we play, you play the one Talkback Lancer. This is just an option that if you want to go, if you've opened up the codec, but you haven't opened up anything else, you can uh, link someone one of your level to a lower cyber, so Ibli. That will then trigger the codec to get you your micro coder to give you a trance back Lancer, and it obviously points downwards. It's got a little bit more of a beefy attack being 1200 rather than being 500, um, but on top of that, what it can do is you can target a code talker monster in your graveyard with a different original name from the monster that you tribute another Cyverse uh, and then special summon it to a zone this card points to. So it allows you to pretty much tag out a Cyverse for one of your higher Link 4s for more of a growing game. Uh, Link Rebo allows you to protect against traps, so evening match can be a pain in the backside. Uh, and then if your opponent is trying to like set fives and pass, you put a Link Rebo on the board, it can protect you from anything that could pretty much interrupt you. Uh, and at the right time as well, you can also help to protect you from the good old fashioned sanguine, uh, as Rob likes to put it, the sanguine sandwich. Um, so that can help you out massively as well. For the Link 2s, we've got the Code Talker and the Code Talker Inverted. These two are like amazing. So the card you want to go to and you're going to be linking to more times than not will be your Code Talker because again it is a dark, which will then trigger to get you a micro coder, but it also points down as well so it allows you to continue to link summon. Then you're going to go into your Inverted and if you play this correctly, the way you can uh, chain your Inverted is as long as you have a correct Cyverse target in the hand, which it just special summons one Cyverse monster when it is link summoned, to a zone it points to, and you've got codec, you could actually summon the card you search of a codec by going chain it one inverted, chain link two codec, 
Codec then searches you out debug, for example. That will then allow you to special and debug as long as you have a correct target in your hand already for the code talker inverted. The other link to is, of course, we've got the Splash Mage. Pretty much you're just using this as your uh, climb because you make Splash Mage, bring one back, then you use Splash Mage, plus that monster you just brought back and go into X Code Talker. And then with the codec on board, you then search out your parallel XZs. Nice! Uh, you got Update Jammer because Update Jammer is a boss. Not only can you go old school OTK by making your transcode attack twice, but it can also, of course, as we all know, uh, hook itself up to Mech Knight Crusader Avramax or Access Code Talker and just go, you know what? I'm going to attack twice. Everyone should know what Trigate does by now, but Trigate in this particular deck, you are going to link it and cover all three of its zones. So for one, um, it can, if a monster code into this card battles your opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled. Nice. Uh, two, once per turn, you entitle one card on the field and banish it. Oh. And then three, once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you negate the activation. If you do, banish that card. Hang on, wait, I don't have to pay any type of cost to do that. I just need to make sure you're co-linked three times. In this deck, that is easy. And to complete the last little zone for the link, you actually put it with an Avramax. And that's why putting um, Bay Links as your top uh, top zone isn't an issue because your opponent's like, attack Bay Links, you go, nah, bro, you got to attack my Avramax. And then because it's co-linked, anything, any battle damage it does is doubled. Oh, GG, bro. Uh, and then you've got it's Code Talker. So you're only really using this as a wind, but... Do not forget, it's other effect as well, is when it is linked summoned, you choose an unused main monster zone equal to the number of monsters currently in the extra monster zone, which will obviously be one. Uh, those zones cannot be used until the monster, um, sorry, used while the monster is face up on the field. Now, the chances are you're probably going to be doing it while you've got a transcode in that zone, but you're going to be getting rid of the transcode. So it's not the end of the world, but what it can do if you do leave transcode on the board is it stops your opponent pointing a link zone down. You'll choose the one below its um, link marker, and then your opponent can't like link something or put a monster to that zone. Very, very cool. Transcode Talker, I only own one. If you have two, you probably put two in rather than uh, Shooting Code Talker. But Transcode is your boss, Mac Daddy. He goes, you know what? I'm going to bring back one of my Code Talkers. I'm going to boost it up by additional attack as well. Like, he just works so, so well. Um, there's not really much more that I need to say about tra um, Transcode Talker. It just puts in so much work and effort that it's the one card that you'd probably say, you know what? I might put him at two. Uh, shooting Code Talker, a bit more of a grind card as well, um, but it does give you this very, very nice option. At the start of the battle phase, um, you can activate this effect. The battle phase, this card can make attacks on your opponent's monsters up to number of monsters this card currently points to, plus one. So it probably could be pointed to one, it could be pointed to none, uh, pointed to two as well. It gives you a lot to kind of move around with. So you can technically end up attacking three times, which is really nice. Uh, when an attack, when this, well, sorry, when it attacks your opponent's monster, this card loses 400 attack, but it's fine, because if it's connected to transcode, it's gaining 500 anyway. At the end of the battle phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters this card destroyed by battle this turn. So you just get to go, cool, draw two, draw three, draw one, nice! And then finishing off with the Mac Daddy boss monsters, of course you've got Axis Kofi OTK, and you've got Crusader Avramax to go, you know what, I'm going to protect all of my friends, I'm going to protect my uh, Salaman Greats, uh, and I'm going to help co-link with Trigate, and you're not going to do a lot about it. So pretty much on a consistent basis, the combo you end with is your opponent needs to deal with an Omni Negate counter trap. They can't attack anything apart from Avramax, and Avramax is a beast to try and deal with. You then got a triple co-linked uh, Trigate, which is going to negate a monster effect as well. Uh, and you pretty much just cause your opponent so many issues, it's unreal. For the final flex spots, like I mentioned before, this is only keeping the spot warm for Mac Daddy Firewall when he comes back off the ban list. But, for now, the flex spots can be Firewall Xyz, because it does give you the ability to bring back one of your Link 4s. So again, a very good grind option. Make this with your Math Mech um, diameter. Not that you'd, you'd be sacrificing your Omni Negate, but it'll give you the ability to bring back a Mech Knight Crusader Avramat should you want to. Uh, and then this card gains 500 attack times the total Link ratings of Link monsters linked to it. So all it needs to do, for example, if it had these two cards beside it, it would actually gain uh, 4,000? 500 times 8. So it would be like gaining 4,000 attack, which is bonkers. 
Um, the other options, like I said, you've got your Albertarian. The reason you make your Albertarian uh, is just because you give it that Omni Negate off of the back of diameter, and then it can search you out the Billion Blade, and the Billion Blade then allows you to pretty much beat over any one of your opponent's monsters that are causing you an issue. Um, but what can also be said with that is you can make your Geomathmic Magma, and why this is so good to be made with your diameter is because it gives you that Omni Negate, but on top of that, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target up to two cards your opponent controls and destroy them. And what that means is if this has got the Omni Negate, your opponent can try and chain them, and you go, all right, whatever, let them go through, or it can negate one that could be quite threatening. Uh, and then if they're just cards that are set there, or two monsters that are set there, you clear two monsters off the board, and then the rest of your, de um, the rest of your board can go in and swing for game. If this card is destroyed by battle or by an opponent's card effect, while it is in uh, um, your possession, you can add one Math Mech spell or trap from your deck to your hand. So again, it can search out the, uh, the Billion Blade, but more of a recursion card. But you'd only be going in for this as an aggressor. You've got your... Where are you? Your Firewall Xyz is your aggressor. Uh, aggressor with a bit of defense if it's made with diameter. Um, defender, more so when it's made with diameter. Uh, but like I said, keeping the space warm for Mac Daddy Firewall right here. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the profile. Uh, I will quickly show you a full-on combo for the deck, but then if you would like to see test hands for this particular build, please, please, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If you get this video up to at least 50 likes, I will be able to bring you a full test hand, and trust me, you want to see how consistent this deck is, because it's crazy good. So, let me reset the board state, and I will show you a very, very simple two-card combo to get you everything you could possibly want in a Code Talker deck. Okay, so the standard two card combo that you'll probably see everywhere is involving Lady Debug and the Cynet Codec. Now, by doing this route, what you end up doing is you end up getting full combo, um, giving an Avramax plus a Counter Trap plus a triple uh, co-linked Trigate Wizard. What we want to try and do to spice this up a little bit more is we actually want to go with the Corrupted Ibli because we want to make sure that we give our opponent a Corrupted Ibli that means we're protected from the Birus and Gammas. Now the only way you can do that is you do need to open up an additional card, being the code generator. So what you do here is you activate the codec, you normal summon your corruptor. Now this could also be any other form of extender that kind of helps you consistently keep the board going. Your board end board isn't going to be as amazing unless you have more extenders in the hand or just a general um, cyverse monster in the hand to go that bit further. But what you're going to be able to do here is you're going to activate your code generator, link with the Ibli in the on the field. And you're going to go straight into your normal code talker. Now, what this will allow you to do is you can go chain link one of your codec, chain link two of your generator, uh, chain link three of Ibli, or if you want to chain block the Ibli, you'd put Ibli as two. By resolving this chain, your generator will then go here, you go, you can send a dot scaper from the deck to the graveyard. The corrupted Ibli will go to your opponent's side of the field, meaning they cannot special summon cards uh, unless it will be link monsters. And then the codec will then trigger to add you a micro coder as it is a dark that you have summoned. You then resolve the generator in the graveyard or send in the of Dotscaper to summon Dotscaper to your side of the field. Then what you want to do is you want to use Dotscaper plus your code talker and you want to go into Transcode Talker. This will then trigger codec again because you have summoned a earth um, trans or earth code talker this time, which will allow you to search you out, which could be a code generator, but because you've already used it, you're going to search out your Gitachi uh, at Ignista because that is basically a free summon. You'll also be triggering off code talkers, uh, trans code talkers effect to bring back your code talker. So again, you can chain block as you see fit. From this hand here, what you have the ability to do is you use microcoder in the hand to link with your code talker and of course um, itself and you go into your inverted code talker. Now again, you have a couple of chain links to go here as well. You've got chain link one specifically of your code talker inverted because you do have an Ignista or a Cyverse card in hand as a legal target. Chain link two of codec to search you out a light and then your chain link three of microcoder to search you out the counter trap. Now the light, because of this example, I'm actually going to show you with debug, but you could also search yourself out the Cyverse gadget, which does the exact same job. So what you do here is you then resolve Talker as Chainlink 1 to Special Summon down at Lady Debug, which will then trigger Lady Debug's effect as its effects are not negated. That will then allow you to search out a level 3 or lower Cyverse, which you kind of want to be your backup set tree, or if you've already gone through that card, it can also be your catchy eye level 2. 
You then get to special summon down your secretary as the extender for now. Now from this point on, what you want to do is you want to link these two together and you want to go into your Cyverse, uh, where are you, you Splash Mage. Trigger Splash Mage's effect to bring back any Cyverse, doesn't really matter because then what you're gonna do is just gonna link these straight away and you're gonna go into an Xcode Talker, which will then trigger the effect of Codec once again because it is a wind this time to search you out your very own Parallel XZ. And I'm gonna quickly grab the second one now as well because we will be going full combo. Then what you do is you special summon the at Ignista, targeting your inverted to negate its effects because he has done his job now. And you're going to link both of those together and you're going to go into a Trigate Wizard. Because you have link summoned, you will then be able to trigger the Parallel Exceed in the hand to summon down there and then trigger the other one to come from the deck to go here. Then from this point on, what you have the ability to do is turn this Parallel Exceed into a Link Karibo and then use Link Karibo plus the Transco Talker and go into an Avramax. Keep in mind that both the Parallel XZs are level 4s or lower. So you then use the final Parallel XZs and you go into your Bay Links. This then completes the free co-links for your Trigate. It also means your opponent cannot attack Bay Links to try and break this because they have to attack Avramax. And you're going to set yourself a conflict. So by passing your turn here, not only have you locked your opponent under an Ibli, so they need to get rid of that first, you've also attacked locked your opponent to only be able to attack your Avramax, which will spin a card if it leaves the field, and you've got an Omni Negate off of the back of Trigate, and you've got an Omni Negate off of the back of Conf uh, Silent Conflict, because you still control your um, Xcode Talker as well. Not to mention, you'll still have multiple cards in the hand to play around with, and if you open up anything like the, your um, Pot of Avarice, you'll be able to draw cards, uh, replenish your graveyard, and kind of go from there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very simple combo for the deck um, that pretty much allows you to win from this point on, because if your opponent breaks it, fair enough. But not only that, but your Trigate is going to be unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Keep that in mind, because you used it with the At Ignista. So whatever your opponent tries to do to break this board, it's going to be very, very difficult because you can respond with a, cone, um, a conflict, you can protect with an Avramax, you can negate with a Trigate, and then if it comes back to your turn, your Trigate's going to banish. Any attack any of these cards do is going to be doubled, um, and not to mention you're going to be able to draw an additional card as well, and you can then start the chain of Sinet Codec all over again. So this deck is beautiful, I absolutely love it. I think it's such a cool, fun and powerful deck to mess around with. Uh, and it really does catch your opponent off guard, especially when you com um, complete the full Corrupted combo. And keep in mind, this is searchable via Lady Debug, which at a certain point, you can sum this down off of your inverted Code Talker if you couldn't get to it from the start. And it's also searchable off of your Sinet Mining as well. Consistency with this deck is key. Uh, and like I said, smash that like button, get it to above 50 likes, and you will see just how consistent this crazy deck is. But for now, as absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy dueling.